Hey guys, today we're going to learn about absolute and relative references in formulas in Excel. Now, this is a really essential concept, but a lot of people just sort of gloss over it when they're learning Excel or they simply, nobody ever told them that this existed, all right? Now, relative references in formulas, that's pretty much uh, what you use when you are selecting cells in, within a formula, an addition, a subtraction, or anything, that's a relative reference. But absolute references, that's an animal entirely. Now, most of you know how to do relative references. Even if you don't know what the concept means, you're going to catch it like really fast when I get started, when I start explaining it. Absolute references, you want to stay for that because that's an entirely different topic in Excel, and a lot of you don't know exactly how to do that. So, let's get started. All right, guys, let's get started. We're going to be talking first about relative references. Now, this is all very, very, very basic in Excel. So if you have even a passing familiarity with uh, formulas in Excel, this is probably below your level, all right? So let's get started. For those of, uh, of you that are complete neophytes in Excel, this is going to be really useful. So what are relative references and absolute references? Well, this is pretty simple. First things first, how do formulas in Excel work? So, for example, you have these two numbers, 1 and 3, and you want to add them up. So, the first thing that you could do, and this is probably what most first-time users do, is they start using off Excel as a calculator. 1 plus 3. All right, so I type in equals, which signals the start of a formula, and then 1 plus 3, as if it were a calculator. And there we go. I get a result. All right? Problem with this is that if I were to change any of the inputs, say, for example, it's no longer 1 plus 3, it's now 1 plus 8, well, Excel doesn't care. Why? Because I told it 1 plus 3. So we're going to get st stuck with 1 plus 3 until I come back and modify the formula. So that's why Excel, and this is pretty much why Excel is uh, so important, is it has its absolute referencing, where instead of doing 1 plus 3, I type in equals, and then I come click on the 1, and then press plus, and then click on the 3, and then press enter. All right? And I get the exact same result, but now this is referenced to these two cells. The moment that I come back here and change something in, in a cell, say for example 3 is now 45, the addition changes, all right? Now, this is called a reference. B12, I mean this B12 here is referencing cell B12, whatever it contains, and this C12 here is referencing cell C12, whatever it contains. And I'm pretty much telling it, go add up both uh, the content of both. So that's pretty simple so far. However, however, what you're going to be looking at is the fact that they're called relative references because I can drag this formula down here. Notice how I'm going to click on the lower right corner and then drag it down here. And the references are going to move. Before, they were pointing at B12 and C12. And now, in this new formula that I created, I'm, it's now going to be pointing to B13 and C13. They're called relative because they're not going to stay stuck pointing at the same place forever, all right? As soon as I copy and paste them or drag them or move them elsewhere, the stuff that they're pointing to is going to change. So notice how I just copied D12 and I'm going to paste it right here in E12. And notice how the reference is moved. Again, C12 and D12. The rule for how references move is that they're going to move in the exact same direction that I am moving my formula, all right? So if I move references all the way out to the right, then the references are also going to be moving all the way out to the right. If I move my formula all the way down, then my references are going to be moving all the way down and they're going to be adding up to zero because there's nothing to add up here. As soon as I type values into these cells, they're going to be included right here, all right? So that's it for relative references. Now let's see them applied in an actual business case. We have here a big table that shows us um, that shows a bunch of sales, all right? 850 something sales to be exact. So, um, say for example, this is saying we sold 13 of those for 25 bucks each, all right? So what we're going to be trying to calculate is the total sales amount for this is saying. And in order to do that, if you got through elementary school all right, you'll know it's the amount sold times the price, all right? I want type in anything like a calculator. That's not what you're supposed to do in Excel, all right? Never ever go ahead and do this. Equals 13 times 25. No, we don't do that, all right? One of the basic rules of etiquette in Excel is never type in constants into formulas, all right? Always use references. So if we were to use a reference, we do the following, and that's it. Now, if we were doing this by hand, we need to calculate cell by cell what it is that is gonna happen. But with Excel, 
we have a pretty nifty system to do it. Just select your formula, go ahead and uh, drag the formula down, and notice how it's going to self-update. Because why? Because relative references. All right, the relative references make sure that they are always going to be pointing to wherever you want them to be pointing, at least in theory. All right, we're going to see that in fact doesn't always pan out that way. All right, so how would go would we go about filling the rest of the table? We don't have to drag everything down by hand. It's pretty simple. Just move your mouse cursor to lower right corner. Notice how it changes into this little black cross. And once you have the black cross, double click, and it's going to autofill all the way down. All right, it's going to autofill all the way down to the end of the table. So there you go. That's how relative references work. Now let's get to where my students start having headaches. Absolute references. All right. I have here the exact same table, amount sold, price, and I've already calculated the total sales. However, I also need to calculate the value added tax, which if you're American, it, this works pretty much the exact same way as a sales tax. You grab the total sales and you add whatever it is that the state chooses to charge the percentage. Okay, so uh, the total sales right now are going to be, well, the VAT, the value added tax is going to be the result of multiplying total sales times the value added tax uh, rate, 16%. Okay, so we're good to go on that one. However, the moment I choose to expand this formula all the way out to the bottom of the table, I'm going to fail miserably. Why? Well, relative references here are not so useful. Right here, I know I'm pointing to two cells that are useful to me, $325 and 16%. However, in the second cell, because the reference is moved, it's pointing to $60, which I do want to, it to move, and uh, this empty cell right here. So it's not so useful for me that the value added ta tax, uh, the red cell, the red reference moves, okay? It's not useful for me at all that this red cell keeps moving and keeps pointing to empty space. So how would I go about fixing that? Well, it's pretty simple. Go ahead and make sure that your mouse cursor is blinking, notice how it's blinking, on top of the red cell, in this instance, N11. That's the one we want to leave as a fixed reference, as an absolute reference. And now, go ahead and press F4 on your keyboard, all right? For those of you that it doesn't work in the first try, try function F4, all right? It's either F4 or function F4. All right, notice how these two dollar signs popped up in front of the N and the 11. And that means that an absolute reference just got made. Absolute reference means that no matter where I drag the formula, it's always going to be pointing to N11. Now, the dollar signs mean that the dollar signs in front of the N, we get N is an absolute reference. The column doesn't move. Dollar signs in front of the 11 means that we're always pointing to row 11, all right? So let's try again, autofill all the way down. And voila, no matter where the formula is, it's always going to be pointing to the same value added tax. All right, notice how it's always pointing to value added tax. Okay, so with that said and done, now let's do the total plus the VAT. Total sales plus VAT, and we have to figure out, do we need any absolute references here? No, no absolute reference. Just go ahead and drag it all the way down and return. Okay, so guys, uh, one thing that I do want you to know is that relative references are pretty simple. Absolute references, not so much. You have to figure out which is the cell that you don't want moving and uh, do an absolute reference on that one. However, there is a little caveat here, and that is you can do partial reference, partial absolute references. Right here, I'm just focusing on doing an absolute reference on the 11. The N is still movable, all right? And if I were to leave the dollar sign just in front of the N, then the absolute reference is in column N, but the 11, row 11, is still movable. Tune that a little bit, because that makes mixed references, which is a topic of another video, so much more complicated to understand. But right now you already know relative references and absolute references, and this is going to get you through pretty much 90% of the formulas that you're going to be facing in Excel. All right, guys? So make sure that you know this one sound cold, because... Guys, this is really essential for Excel. I know a bunch of people that claim to be intermediate or advanced Excel users, and they don't know how to do an absolute reference. That doesn't even place you at the bottom of the beginner users, all right, guys? So make sure that you know them, and uh, I hope you like the video. If you do, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Do you want to be an Excel god? 
Our online course will turn you into an Excel master in only 90 days. Excel is the most important tool in the office, but almost nobody knows how to use it. Most people dive right into Excel with no formal training and never use the right tools. And thus, they end up delivering mess reports that are full of mistakes and they end up hating their jobs. In reality, Excel is really simple to use and can do your job for you, if you know how to use it. But you have to pick the right place to learn from, or you'll only end up more confused with all of the different tools and functions that Excel has to offer. So, what can you do? Our Excel course is tailor-made for you. We're going to teach you Excel, all of Excel, using real-life examples. From simple exercises to full-fledged business case studies. Take the online course and you'll be an Excel god in only 90 days. The course consists in more than 45 lessons and 15 case studies, all with their detailed solutions completely recorded in video, and you're going to be able to access them whenever you want, whatever you want. Best of all, you're going to have lifetime access to the course, and you're going to get any of the updates that we're constantly putting out for free. Even better, when you get our course, you'll have free access to our full Visual Basic and Macros course, and also to our Power BI course all with just one single purchase. More than 3,000 students have passed through our classrooms. We've attended companies like Kodak, IBM, Samex, HP, Continental, DB Schenker, and more. So, if you want to absolutely master Excel, make sure that you sign up now. You will become an Excel guy. A2 Excel.